All right, first thing we're having a look at here is factorizing expressions uh, using common factors. So just a quick refresher. You might be familiar with factors if we're talking about something like this. If we were to say, uh, let's say I've got the number 18, I might say that the, its its factors are 2 by 9 or 3 by 6 or 18 by 1. And, and that's true. Those are the pairs of numbers or pairs of integers that multiply uh, to give 18. Uh, but what we're talking about here is the factors of any uh, set of terms are just the uh, smaller parts of those terms that multiply to give that term. So let's look at something like this. If I've got uh, 8x squared, well that's just 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x. So that's all the factors that go into make up uh, our 8x squared. Now we could write that as 4 times 2 times x times x or lots of other different um, combinations along there. I've used the prime factors there of 2's. Um, but that's, that's going to be important for us uh, when we're looking at finding common factors between terms. So uh, let's try to take a nice simple one and we're going to factorize something like this. Okay, well what we're looking for there is the highest factor that they share. Well, if we look at it, we've got this 8x, which is, um, that's 4 times 2x. And then this is just 4 times 1. Well, the, f the factor that they share, or the highest factor that they share, is that 4. Now, we could say that, say that they share a factor of 2, which is true. But what we're always looking for is what we call the highest common factor. Now, as the name suggests, it's the, it's the highest, the most factors that they share in common, that both terms have the same. Um, so we would just write that uh, this way. We would say that they share a common factor of 4, and then we write the remaining factors inside our set of brackets like this. And what you'll notice is that we end up with um, a grouped set of terms, so we have four lots of 2x plus 1. And if we were to expand that, by using our expansion technique, we'd, we'd end up back up here. Okay, so we haven't actually changed the expression. We've just manipulated it. We've just made it look different, uh, put it in a different way if you would like. Um, what about if I've got something with a few more common factors? So let's say I've got 15xy uh, plus 10x squared. Okay, well, let's again look for the common factors that they share. I'm going to look straight away and say that I've got uh, 5 times 3 times x times y and then I've got 5 times 2 times x times y. Now they share a couple of common factors there. The first one being this 5. They both share that 5 and they also both share uh, this x here. Now they don't share the three and the y or the two and the uh, the two. I'm sorry, I've written that wrong. That should be an x. Um, and the and the second x there they don't share. Uh, but what we can do then is say, okay, we write our common factors outside the brackets, five y. Pardon me again, getting all muddled up here. Five uh, x outside of three y plus two x. Again, what goes inside my brackets here is the remaining factors uh, from back up here. So uh, I've got 5x times 3y gives me 15xy, and then 5x times 2x gives me 10x squared. Again, and of course, we could always check that we are correct there by expanding it back out, and we should get back straight up to 15xy plus 10x squared, which we would there. Okay, let's try something a little bit harder. Uh, let's say I've got... Uh, 24a squared b uh, minus 16ab squared plus 12b. Okay, so I've got three terms there. Uh, we straight away, I hope, notice that they share some things in common. Okay, I'm going to say straight away that I've, I've, I'm looking at uh, the numbers straight away and, and I 
could find out what the highest common factor they all share, that they're all even, so they're going to share two, uh, but they're all multiples of four as well, so I'm going to stop and say, all right, well, I could, I could recognize straight away that I've got uh, four times six, four times four, and I've got four times three. All right, so one of my common factors straight away I know is going to be four. I'm going to have other common factors, uh, but uh, the four comes up straight away. Um, next, let's go and have a look. Well, they, these two have A's. The first two here have A's, uh, but the third one doesn't, so that's no good to me. Um, then they all share B's, though. So I could go and say that I know for B it will be a common factor, and that's it for us. Okay, that's that's it in terms of the common factors. Um, now, what's what's left for me here? I've got 6a squared uh, minus 4ab plus, well, that's just 3. Okay, so if, again, we could check that we are correct. We are in that case. Uh, be careful with this sign here. Make sure that if it's a negative term there, it becomes a negative term down here. And as I've said for the third time now, we could just expand this out to check that you were correct. Um, you could do that mentally or by physically writing that out, but um, you should be able to get straight back up to that original line by expanding your set of brackets. Let's try one last one. Um, let's say I've got something like minus x squared y squared uh, minus 2xy squared uh, minus x squared y. All right, straight away, the thing that jumps out to me here is that the numbers probably aren't as helpful as they were in the previous example. So, in fact, our numbers are not helpful here. Uh, they share no common factors in terms of actual numerical factors, but they've got lots of um, algebraic f factors that they share in common. So, they've all got x's, well, x squared, then x, then then x. So, I know straight away a common factor is going to be x, but they also all share y's too or y squareds or y's, so I know that y is common factor as well. Now, if we look at it, um, I'm going to be left with x, y, uh, just y, and then just x. So that's my highest common factor. But what we can actually do here as well is rather than writing three negative terms in the bracket like this, we can actually take this negative and say, well, they all are negatives, so what we can in fact do is say minus xy outside of xy plus 2y plus x. So in fact, taking this negative out here makes it a better factorization. And what you'll see is we start to get further into this topic when we start to use this factorization. You could do it either way. You could leave the negative inside the brackets or keep it outside the brackets, depending on what we wanted to use it for. But it's important to see that we could write it either way. Now, as I've said before, you could expand that out and you get minus xy times xy would give you this one, minus x squared y squared. Again, minus xy times 2y would give me that and the third term is correct as well minus x squared y so easy way to check when you're starting these out is just to expand them either mentally or physically write them out again now this is our answer this is what we want that's factored form we call it fully factored okay fully factored just means that we have all the common factors taken out and put um, right here or in this case with the negative as well um, we could we could have just taken out x as a factor. And obviously the inside of the brackets would look different, but then it wouldn't be fully factored. It would just be partially factored. Um, so we're always looking to fully factorize.